Hello and welcome to Legislative Report. I'm State Representative Seth Grove of the 196th District in York County. When crafting tax policies, lawmakers must strive to fund the core functions of government without stifling job creation or personal economic prosperity. The House Finance Committee considers bills related to taxes in addition to those dealing with the lottery and the programs it funds. Joining me today to discuss the agenda for the Finance Committee is Chairman Representative Kerry Benninghoff from Center and Mifflin Counties. Chairman Benninghoff, thanks so much for joining me today. I appreciate it. Morning, Seth. First, let's start off with what the Finance Committee does. It's a very, very important committee, um, especially dealing with the Constitution that it, it all tax increases or anything dealing with uh, funding increases have to flow through. Uh, the General Assembly first and foremost, and they would go to the Finance Committee. So it's very important. What, what, what are the core functions of the Finance Committee? That's a great question, Seth. I think a lot of people by its name think that we are the ones appropriating all the fundings here in the mm -hmm. Commonwealth, and that's not necessarily the case. Uh, our purview is over the uh, Department of Revenue, which is also encompassing lottery, but as you said earlier, it's about tax policy. Mm -hmm. Setting rates, repealing taxes, increasing taxes, or whatever else, it has to do more with tax policy than it is actually appropriating money. Our name might sound like we're a financier, but we are not. Uh, we are more about trying to specifically improve our tax policy here in the Commonwealth, which I know you've been intricately interested in and intricately involved. Yeah. It, it, dealing with, with finance, it, it's probably one of the toughest issues to deal with because no matter which way you shift uh, a certain tax rate or look at taxing one entity to another, you're really affecting economic growth in the economy of a state. And we have a huge state, we have border counties, um, we have competition across state lines and globally. It's probably one of the hardest topics to deal with. What's your thoughts on, on trying to, to garnish uh, good tax policy moving forward? Well, I think one of the things we have to keep cognizant always is mm -hmm. there's not a single dollar that government spends that they have not taken from somebody first. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, people think if they just go to the next layer of government, uh, they get free money. Well, there is no free money. Whether it's county government, schools, state government, or the federal government, we are all getting our revenue sources from some tax policy or tax law that has been posed on the public who's earning this money. And as you said, that might be Pennsylvanians, it might be people who come into Pennsylvania to work, shop, or, or do business, but that is not government money. And therefore, as a policymaker, I always feel it's inherent upon us to be very conscientious about that, how we spend it, and be prudent, because there is no free money and there are no extra pots of money sitting around that we have to be very careful at striking a balance. Uh, one of the good things for your citizens and mine is that as a state, we are required to pass a balanced budget. Mm -hmm. So we cannot spend any more than what we have, which is actually a good thing. I think governments would have a tendency to get out of control. But unfortunately, there are those who would like to try to do small uh, caveats around that by borrowing money. And historically in Pennsylvania, we have gotten into that habit of when we didn't want to raise taxes or couldn't feel as though we could impose a higher tax because there's always the politics of what we do in public policy. People would borrow money. And if the rates were low, they thought, well, that's not such a bad idea. The money's uh, coming to us pretty cheap. But the bottom line is we're spending money today that's oftentimes amortized over 20 and 30 years down the road. And in my opinion, we are imposing tax debt on future generations. Mm -hmm. And that's something as a chairman and now as a committee member, uh, I want our people to think about every time a new tax is suggested or increasing of a rate. Yeah, that, that's critical. I, I think we've seen, um, at least with the federal government, how their debt spending has affected, you know, just being able to keep the doors open of the federal government, much less, you know, obviously we don't have that high of a debt in Pennsylvania, but, you know, every, every, every new debt we enter into takes money out of the general fund for debt service. So well, it, I think it's a simple a way to look term. at that mm -hmm. is think about running a checkbook for a year and never putting an entry in the register. Mm -hmm. That's essentially what the federal government is doing. They're spending money every day, millions and millions of dollars every day, and not recording it. A quick example in the Commonwealth, and fortunately we've changed this, but under the 2011-2012 uh, proposed budget at about $29 billion, mm -hmm. uh, that breaks down to $1,000 a second in Pennsylvania being spent. Fortunately, in the last two years we've tried to right that ship and change the direction of that, and we are now spending less money to a tune of almost $2 billion in what was proposed in that budget. Now, that may not sound like a big deal to the average person, but you're talking about dropping down to about $70 million a day or $860 a second. 
Uh, while that number may not seem like a significant drop, it's more about the fact that we're going the right direction and mm -hmm. trying to reduce government spending and really prioritize where money is being spent. And that's probably the most critical thing facing us as lawmakers and policy decisions. What's the core function of government? Where's their waste? Where's their fraud? Um, what's antiquated that we don't need to fund anymore? And uh, it, it, it's probably one of the hardest decisions coming into, into any, any year is, is where to appropriate that money in the budget. And obviously, we have a committee at least dealing with the, the finance side of that. Uh, I do want to hit one great piece of legislation you got through last year towards the end of Absolutely. legislation, PEP legislation. Right. Uh, great piece of legislation. Um, was honored to co-sponsor it. Um, and, uh, you know, it really, the, it, it's looking to draw new business in and provide incentives f to hire Pennsylvania residents. Um, can you go into a little detail about your PEP legislation? What we call it PEP, P -E -P. It's mm -hmm. promoting employment in Pennsylvania. Uh, I would like to say it was my idea, but it mm -hmm. was not. It's actually something shared with me by my local chamber business director who came out of Kansas. And I think that's what you and I have experienced here in the legislature. New people coming in periodically bring different ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the laws that we introduce are sometimes suggestions by local business people or people who have worked in other areas who have seen things that would improve our commonwealth or things that we need to change uh, that aren't working so well. Uh, this legislation, very specifically, I felt was a new tool for Pennsylvania to try to entice business to come to the Commonwealth. Whether you're for or against that or think businesses have to be enticed to come here, the reality is it's happening across the country, it's across the world. Mm -hmm. We are no longer worrying about who's competing against us in a neighboring county or in a town just down the road. We are in a global market. Uh, Pennsylvania has marketing and sales promotions going on in 17 different countries, not just in the Commonwealth or neighboring states. PEP is a kind of a different type of tax policy and historically we would use tax incentives by giving away tax credits or actual cash. Mm -hmm. Here's five million dollars, please come put a business in our, in our commonwealth. And obviously it had to do with other characteristics, but these things are used as additional tools in a toolbox where PEP was something that I felt inherently put the onus on the business. Uh, they would be given the ability to reinvest their income taxes that they would normally take out or payroll taxes and submit to the Commonwealth from each employer and we would decide where the money goes. Mm -hmm. Under PEP, they are able to take that same amount of tax revenue and reinvest it back into business only after a business has been established in the Commonwealth and only if they create jobs from that. So it's kind of a self-perpetuating proposal. There is no cash laid out by the Commonwealth. There is no real liability to the public and the citizens and the taxpayers that we mm -hmm. talked about earlier. The reality is it puts the onus on the business. You come, you build, you establish, and as you create more jobs, we will reward you for doing that. And it's a set time period. It's not forever. But it helps get the stability in these businesses that they can stand strong and, most importantly, do what we want them to do most, create jobs. Mm -hmm. Government doesn't create jobs. We try to create the opportunity. With your insight, your background, you know, you saw that, you understood that, and I think that's why we got such a good bipartisan support for the legislation. Yeah, and it's, it's a great proposal because all the local taxes stay there, so it's right. not hurting school districts, local governments. Um, you're hiring new people, so you're putting them on the payroll, so they'll go out and shop, and you're collecting sales tax from it. So there's, there's inherent revenue coming into the Commonwealth as well. It was a huge, huge win. I applaud you for bringing that legislation to the Well, I couldn't do it alone. It, it has to do with the members like yourself having the insight to make a very simple decision. Mm -hmm. Do employers spend their money better, or does Harrisburg spend their money mm -hmm. better? You and I, I think, agree. Keep the money out of Harrisburg and let it stay local. Amen, amen. Now, this session, we started off with a bang. Some very exciting stuff, elimination of taxes. Uh, most people don't hear that coming from gov government, but you know, two votes, um, two uh, two repeals of taxes. One was a corporate loan tax, and the other one was actually carving out um, some of the death tax um, inheritance tax for mom and pop uh, businesses. Now we did that last year for family farmers. Right. It was very successful. Uh, obviously, a lot of these family-owned businesses, whether it's a farm or, or any kind of business, um, when the the, the patriarch. Uh, may pass away, the inheritance tax will end up shutting down the business and uh, doing a huge detriment to our economy. So two huge, huge, huge eliminations. Can you kind of go over the corporate loan tax a little bit? And Yeah, uh, yeah these, these are, again, tax policies. They're actually being taxed on getting a loan to mm -hmm. try to perpetuate the business. Uh, as we know, things have been a little stagnant within the economy. A lot of our lending agencies have not been... Um, um, real forthcoming in wanting to loan money. It's been very difficult. And I think it's kind of um, intriguing that a business who is not 
subject any less than you and I are to mm -hmm. tough economic times, having the willingness to say, I'm willing to step out of a branch, I'm willing to borrow some money to grow my jobs in my business, grow my business so I can hire more local people, mm -hmm. boom, in comes the government, mm -hmm. and we want to tax you for it. Mm -hmm. We distinctively, in the Finance Committee, wanted to start the year off in trying to repeal taxes, trying to lower the liability on taxpayers as a message that says, mm -hmm. you know, we are listening to you. And I would tell you, as much as I like to take the credit, these bill ideas are not my ideas. These are members of the committee. These are members of the legislature who don't serve on the committee who have talked to local people like you do in their areas and says, hey, you're strangulating me to death. Mm -hmm. You want us to grow jobs, but you're strangulating us. So that was a pretty simple one. Uh, now, granted, it's only out of the committee. It's going to the full house next week. We hope to be able to get that continued through the process. Mm -hmm. I think the governor agrees and understands that these are important steps. It sends a significant message. You either grow government or you reduce taxes and grow business. It's a very, very simple mathematic yeah. equation. The other one was the inheritance tax. This is building on something that we worked on last year. As you said, uh, last year's bill specifically was towards agriculture. Uh, everybody tells me they're for open space. Mm -hmm. uh, people tell me they're for less taxation, but yet we tax people for working hard and owning property. And in the agricultural community, many of them are land rich and cash poor. And as you said, upon the demise of a parent in a farm like that, uh, oftentimes the siblings or the children underneath that cannot afford to pay the inheritance tax to keep that farm in agriculture. Mm -hmm. In return, we have programs, ag land preservation, things where we're taking other people's tax dollars to try to buy land up in our communities to keep in agriculture. My feelings has always been, I think you agree, is lessen the burden on the people who own the land. Mm -hmm. Don't make somebody have to pay for something that the family already owns. As long as it stays in agriculture, we're going to repeal it. We're going to do the same thing this year for small business. It makes sense. And I think it's a smart way government can help stimulate jobs. We don't create them. We can stimulate an atmosphere by saying to small businesses, you keep it in the same process, you keep it in the same family line, and keep producing the same products and things, we're going to lift that burden off mm -hmm. you. And I think with your help and the other members of the committee, we can get that done. Yeah, and it was amazing. Both pieces of legislation uh, passed with bipartisan support. Um, what amazed me about the corporate loan tax was it was only a tax if you borrowed money from a Pennsylvania entity. Yes. Talk about completely hurting your, your, your local business. You can go outside the state and borrow money and not get taxed. It literally forces people outside the state versus looking at, at all the options here in the state. So it was a good thing we can get those eliminated. Hopefully we can continue on. Speaking of the inheritance tax, uh, a lot of people just hate it because they've already been taxed on, on their entire life, whether it's income tax, sales tax. So everything they've bought, they've already been taxed on. And then they're going to hit you at death. Do you think we'll ever get to the point of eliminating the inheritance tax? Do you think we'll just keep on chipping away at it like we've been doing uh, for, for small family businesses and just keep on doing carve outs until it's not even worthwhile to actually collect it? Well, the problem with taxes mm -hmm. is people um, need to make a decision on who best spends the money. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, to your acute question is, yes, I'm going to keep chipping away as long as I'm chairman, yeah. as long as I have good people like you supporting it, because we've never been able to wipe it out. It's mm -hmm. well over $800, $900 million. Mm -hmm. But what it is symbolically is a almost a poster child of government's dependency on other people's money. Mm -hmm. uh, and so there were fl plusher times in the economy back in the 90s where two budget cycles we could have eliminated. Mm -hmm. And so to me, it's about electing people who are going to philosophically say, government shouldn't be spending my money, we should be spending money. In your interim, we're going to keep chipping away at it. It's a big lift, and obviously money's tough. And the problem is government either cuts programs, reduces its spending, or finds new revenue to tax and create more revenue to spend. Mm -hmm. uh, those are philosophical debates. There are some that serve in the General Assembly, don't, don't care what taxes we raise. You can raise them all and just keep raising them, mm -hmm. and don't ever say no. Uh, one of the things I think a lot of us are focused on, and I know the current administration, is trying to find more efficiencies within government. Mm -hmm. And as we try to find those efficiencies, taking advantage of technology, we can reduce the cost of providing the same services and just do it smarter and cheaper. Mm -hmm. In my county alone, uh, because we tipped over a certain population base, my county is now expected by an old county code to split the Ontario's office into two elected offices with a new office holder and a deputy and employees. It's probably about, about a half a million dollar lift, easy, every year. Bottom line is, by me changing a simple bill, one word, from shall to may, our counties can choose to do that. Well, that law was written in 1955 before all the technology and computers and things. Mm -hmm. 
My opinion is we need to take advantage of the technology that's available to us and allow governments at all levels to reduce their costs and do what their duties are more efficiently. And we can eliminate things like the inheritance tax. As you said, I don't think I hear more about most taxes other than inheritance tax, maybe property taxes, by the majority of people because they just don't get why they feel they're taxed twice. Let's hit the big, the big tax. The thing that uh, businesses say all the time is, is hard for them to stay here in Pennsylvania or even want to come here to Pennsylvania, corporate net income tax at 9.99%. Highest corporate net income tax out of all the states. If you add federal taxes on top of it, we're the highest business tax entity in the entire world. Japan was number one, but a few years ago, they knocked theirs down. How do you compete in a global business with a corporate net income tax? On top of that, corporate stock and franchise tax, which we've been phasing out, but again, is basically a property tax on businesses. And we're the only state, I believe, that actually charges both a CNI and a corporate stock and franchise tax. How, how do we create jobs? How do we grow business with with these two monstrosities hanging over our head? Well, you asked a simple question. I'm going to give you a simple answer. How do we compete? Very mm -hmm. simple. You don't. Mm -hmm. The reality is we can do all kinds of incentive type programs, but the one number one deterrent, if people look at the Commonwealth and say, wow, they have two major corporate taxes. Mm -hmm. Corporate ta income tax is obviously taxing on the income of the corporation. Capital stock and franchise tax, which is kind of a uh, parallel tax, is actually taxing the assets of that corporation. Mm -hmm. That corporation can make zero dollars or show no profit that year and will still tax them on the assets and the equipment that they have in that business. That, you know, philosophically just makes absolutely no sense. Mm -hmm. As you said, we are working to phase that out. It should be gone by 2014. Unfortunately, under previous administrations, it actually got stopped. This is something we started in the 90s, trying to slowly ratchet this down because it's the number one thing we hear. Your state taxes us twice. Mm -hmm. People think because someone's a business that they're rich. This is on top of the fact that the federal government is taxing these people at only 41.5%, almost 42% of their income is going to the feds, mm -hmm. and then we're taxing them Frankly, I'm not sure what they get up to go to work for every day. Mm -hmm. uh, the reality is a large percent of our businesses are paying the majority of our taxes in the Commonwealth. Uh, the corporate net income tax is something I know you've been very interested in trying to dr uh, drop that down. You know, a simple 1% reduction there is massive for a business and when they make decisions whether to grow or hire more po employees. You increase that and that's a complete, mm -hmm. you know, blockade to any additional growth. So I think it's inherent upon us. We can come up with all kinds of incentive programs, but as long as we have that kind of poor, heavy burden tax policy, we're never going to get to that point. And the capital stock franchise tax is just so frustrating. I can't wait till it's gone. And that should be phased out in the beginning of 2014. Yeah, that, that'll be a huge net benefit to the state of Pennsylvania. Uh, obviously, last year, session we had a bill moving sponsored by um, policy chairman Dave Reed yes. to phase down the corporate net income tax uh, from 9.99 down to 6.99. Closed some, um, did an add back provision to maybe close out some loopholes to try to get it uh, revenue neutral in the first year and then slowly phase it down. Um, How does that, do you think that'll work to bring us more in line with our or our, our global competitors to say we're open for business and please come to Pennsylvania. There we is want no business, one quick fix to anything, mm -hmm. Seth, and you know that, but mm -hmm. it is a major step to that direction. Mm -hmm. You know, Pennsylvania, bordered by Delaware, we have sales tax of 6%. They don't have zero mm -hmm. sales tax. Our geography, I think, has always made us very attractive. You have to go through Pennsylvania mm -hmm. to get just about anywhere you want to go north mm -hmm. and some places east and west. Uh, I've often said, you know, we're in the middle of major arteries, I-80, I-99, mm -hmm. 322. Uh, but those are only certain aspects of trying to make Pennsylvania competitive. When you have bad, heavy burden tax policy, that hinders it. I think Dave Reed's Paul, uh, proposal to try to ratchet that down is a good step. The fact that we have been doing that with capital stock franchise tax tells me we can do it. Mm -hmm. But hi Pennsylvania's history shows that we don't do things real fast mm -hmm. in all in one bite. And I think... Um, you know, to be economically sound, a phase-in is okay with me. I think it's a uh, prudent way mm -hmm. to make sure you can manage your bills, pay your balance, balance your budget, and still provide that tax benefit. So I think that's probably a smart approach. Yeah, it, it, it seems to work. And obviously, one thing I do find interesting about the capital stock and franchise tax, as that rate gets lower, it seems to be an increasing amount of money coming into it. Um, so I, I think there is viability in actually reducing taxes. You bring more tax money in. Bush era tax cuts, they cut taxes and uh, economic growth spurred. There was more revenue coming in 
with a lower tax rate. And I Absolutely. think I think that's an economic policy we need to start moving forward with. History has showed it repetitively. Mm -hmm. Your lower tax rates, lower tax burden, and people spend more money and people mm -hmm. invest more money. And that's the big thing. Businesses are sitting on money right now. They're afraid to invest. Mm -hmm. They're not sure where the economy is going to go. They're not sure where unemployment, interest rates, and all these things are going to go. So they're sitting on money, which stifles the economy for growth and job growth. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're, you're right on the money. And we have a ton of taxes. We actually have um, cigarette tax. We have the sales and use tax which is pretty interesting because most people don't understand the use component of the sales and use tax. They walk into the store, they pay their six cents on their dollars, the sales tax, but they don't realize you have to pay a use and, and that's kind of where the internet sales tax comes through. Right. Um, the fact that you know the, the US Constitution specifies that interstate commerce is you know the role of the federal government interstate is um, the states but the internet unfortunately is international. Correct. Not only, you know, inner commerce between uh, states. What are we looking at to deal with that use side? And, you know, is it is it foreseeable that we'll ever have a true sales tax on the Internet? Um, will the federal government allow it? Are we able to collect it currently? Well, we're getting... Um many different challenges on that, but the reality is I think we're getting some compliance. As you know, it is your responsibility should you buy something mm -hmm. uh, outside of Pennsylvania, whether it's through the internet or some catalog, to remit the sales tax to the mm -hmm. Commonwealth. Under this administration, a new line has actually been added to your W-2 form, and you are to voluntarily uh, add that in when you do your taxes. Now, I understand compliance is not always that great, but I think the majority of people want to do the right thing. I think some of it was about education, and we've mm -hmm. been trying to educate people through the Department of Revenue, this administration, and even our Finance Committee. We hosted several hearings on that. Uh, in addition to that, many of our local business, brick and mortar business as we mm -hmm. call them, the tangibles, the guys who are donating to the fire company and donating to local charities and things, and also paying electric bills, property taxes, and everything else, mm -hmm. they're saying, wait, we're starving to death. We're being competed against by companies that aren't even in the Commonwealth, not even in the country, and may even be in another country, and they're paying no taxes. Mm -hmm. And so there's been a great push across the nation. There's a voluntary system that was going on for a while where some states got into it, but that didn't work very well. And so Pennsylvania has pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed, and uh, there's been some lawsuits have filed, and the majority uh, of these sales are going through an organization called Amazon, and they have tremendous warehouses, and where they're able to move products very fast every day. And that's the beauty of the c computer. You can order something today and have it on your front porch uh, later that day, and oftentimes that's coming out sales tax. Uh, Commonwealth was losing somewhere around $380 million a year. Mm -hmm. That's not a small amount of money. Uh, that would actually be a nice way to start our budget to have that $380 million. So through voluntary compliance, the new forms, and the fact that Amazon and some of these companies have finally yielded to the pressure and said we will voluntarily start to collect it on site. Part of the issue was who was to collect it. Mm -hmm. And especially if you order from Amazon and you happen to be a middleman, then you resell it. You know, who should be collecting that sales tax? Mm -hmm. and with technology today, it should not be that difficult. Uh, I've often said you only have to call Visa or MasterCard. If I shop in New Zealand today and make a purchase, I guarantee you I will have a bill at my house by the end of the month. Mm -hmm. And if they're able to do that, I think the Commonwealth should be able to do the same thing. And frankly, the sales tax is a large portion of our budget. Last thing I'd say on that is about 33% of that in the Commonwealth actually comes from transient people traveling in and out of the mm -hmm. Commonwealth. Uh, that was originally, believe it or not, started as an education tax and has now been obviously expanded for multiple uses and generally goes into the general fund. Yeah, it, it, it's interesting. A lot of states, I know Bobby Jindal down in Louisiana, a couple other governors has proposed expanding the sales tax, getting rid of you know exceptions in the sales tax to eliminate the corporate net income tax or um, uh, personal income tax. Uh, obviously, you, you, you set up competition while you know, your local residents aren't paying any taxes, local businesses. Right. Um, you may have businesses that are not competitive. Um, I look at you know, service entities. Um, there's three states, I believe, that currently actually tax service entities, attorneys, engineers, and so forth. Yeah, how will that, when we discuss this, how do, how do you think that'll affect in the long run coming down as states kind of change their tax structure a little bit? Are, are we going to have to move in a different direction or just say, you know what, we're just going to take all of our taxes and try to get them lower to be more competitive rather than um, eliminate? 
Well, Seth, a lot of it comes down to what we talked about earlier, and that is commonwealths and the citizenry have to decide what all it mm -hmm. is expecting government to pay for. Mm -hmm. And if you're expecting the services, then you have to find the revenue to do that. If we want to entice businesses, then we're trying to reduce that, then we have to make up the revenue. Mm -hmm. uh, I've always had some interest in this sales tax, only for one particular reason, and that is, well, actually two major reasons. Mm -hmm. One is I believe that at least the consumer has a choice. Mm -hmm. You know, to tax people for showing up for work seems kind of uh, counterproductive. Mm -hmm. But people have choices on what they spend, how much they spend, how often they have to spend. Now, there's always been the argument on the regressivity of taxing certain commodities like clothing and food, and I've mm -hmm. kind of stayed away from that. But luxury items, mm -hmm. you know, historically governments have taxed what they call, I call sin taxes, mm -hmm. tobacco and alcohol because uh, people have choice there. So if the philosophy works there, why not use it across the board? Uh, the reality is it depends on how much money you want to spend, how much revenue you want to raise. But sales tax is something that historically has continued to grow over the years. Even in tough economic times, mm -hmm. uh, seldom has it ever dipped below the negative. Yeah. And people continue to purchase um, for whatever reason. Uh, we've seen some drop-offs. One of the tough things for a state like Pennsylvania, uh, surrounded by other commonwealths, is that they have different tax policies. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't take much as mobile of a society as we are to jump across the border and uh, make a purchase and not pay a sales tax. And so we have to be very careful balancing that. Mm -hmm. And sometimes philosophically, if you're not a business and receiving the reduction, people don't see the merit of raising the sales tax. Uh, people oftentimes are only concerned about the tax that affects them yeah. and not their neighbor or the businesses that keep their communities running. So it is a very, very difficult task. And to just broad brush raise it and say we're going to eliminate everything else uh, is probably a greater leap of faith than I think most Pennsylvanians, which are historically pretty conservative about making major mm -hmm. tax policy changes and would have to be done gradually. Yeah, great conversation. Unfortunately, we're out of time. Uh, love to have you back uh, to get another update. Uh, love the tax policy discussion because I think it brings to light a, a lot of issues uh, people don't realize, especially when people are kind of focused at their own bottom line instead of seeing maybe the big picture of, of shifting some tax policies around. So appreciate your time. Um, I'm State Representative Seth Grove. If you need assistance with any state government matter, feel free to contact me at my local office. The address and number will be shown in a moment. Thanks for watching, and again, thank you, Chairman Benninghoff. Please join me next time for a Legislative Report.